Rowdy, uh, a deep conversation prior to you coming on about uh, drug testing. Did Were they doing that back when you were swimming where there was somebody who had to watch you take a urine test? <laughs> I didn't have it that bad, Dan. Nobody actually went into the bathroom to watch it. But, uh, yeah, there was drug testing. We did it all the time, and we only did it after the major meets. We didn't have an ongoing test throughout the year. We just did it at the Olympics, World Championships, et cetera. As far as do we hear uh, about uh, doping when it comes to swimming? I, I know that the whole Russian track and field team is not allowed to go to Rio, but uh, as far as – And that's uh, great, by the way. Yeah, but attached to swimming – Uh, The East Germans used to do this, but can you tell, could you tell when you would see an opponent if somebody was using back uh, when you were swimming? Absolutely. You know, no, no question about it, Dan. When I, when I was swimming, I was sort of the height of that East German cheating machine. And mostly it came from the women. I don't know why, but somehow it didn't apply to Hmm. the men, even though I think they were cheating as well. Um, They just didn't figure out how to do it as well with the men as the women. But, uh, yeah, it, it still goes on. There, there's no doubt about it. Um, I, I have my suspicions on who and, and where, but... Uh, even now? I can tell, with swimming? Even now, oh yeah, man. It, it happens. I mean, I, 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 I think we're burying our head in the sand if we don't think it's out there. Um, but I do feel like overall, our sport, swimming, is much cleaner than some of the other sports in the Olympic Games, and, and even in the professional sports, obviously. I just don't see it as much. I don't have my eyes and ears to the ground on on the other sports as much as swimming, obviously, but I just don't see it in swimming, especially here in our country. I just feel very confident about our country and, and where we're at as being clean. But what is the eye test? Well, it, you, you, you can see it, it's not so much the eye test physically, Dan. It, it's what... It's the history behind an athlete and what they did before and where they're at now. The dramatic changes in times over a one-year or two-year period and at a certain age. You can also see some signs. In the, in the old days, you could see you know, women with mustaches and deep voices and, and hair and their big foreheads. Those were the, the steroid days. And you can't tell quite as much physically today because of the microdosing that happens. And, and that is much more uh, difficult to tell from a physical appearance. I just base it on the history of what they've done in the sport up to now. Wasn't there the Irish swimmer, a uh, female yeah. swimmer, last name Smith, I believe? Yep, Michelle Smith, back in 96. Um, Ended up winning a couple gold medals in those games in Atlanta, and then later on, you know, got kicked out of the sport because she uh, got caught cheating. We're talking to Rowdy Gaines, the uh, NBC Olympic swimming analyst. I know that you were probably in the small group, I believe, after London, and you didn't think that Michael Phelps was going to be able to stay retired. Do, do I remember that correctly? That you said yeah. to Dan Hicks that you you didn't you didn't believe it. That was one of the last questions that Dan asked me on the broadcast when Michael was swimming. He asked me if I thought he was going to stay retired, and I just didn't believe. So I listen when you're when you have that magic, and you're only back then you're 27 years of age. Why not keep utilizing? He he he's a competitor. He loves it. It's not like he's a boxer, Dan. He's not like getting out there getting beat up or football where there's such a huge risk of injury. He's got the rest of his life to live. And when you're at or near the top. Um, I say keep going, you know, I mean, and I just didn't feel like he had left everything in the pool in 2012. I don't think he was happy back then. Yeah. Uh, I think he was just fighting to just stay alive in 2012. And so many things have changed over the last four years in his life to where he's just in a great state right now, in a great state of mind anyway. And uh, he wanted to go one last round. Yeah, you guys have said that on the broadcast, and and, and and I've been around Michael, and it just, he wasn't open, he wasn't having fun, mm-hmm. it didn't seem like that he was yep. he was wired to handle this, but it felt like rehab may have opened his eyes into who he really is, or who he wants to be, and having his baby, and it, I don't know if how he's going to do in Rio, but I think he's going to have a good time in Rio, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You're spot on, Dan. I mean, it, the, the trials have been well documented that he's had the last four years, but I, I think he's gained so much perspective. Think about us, Dan. I mean, think about when we were 
mid-20s. I didn't have my life figured out. I didn't really know. I was, you know, doing some things I probably wasn't very proud of. But as you start to mature, and especially fatherhood, you know, that just changes your life so much. It changes things dramatically. And, dude, man, for 12 years, all he did was eat, breathe, and drink swimming. There was a time, Dan, that between 2000 and 2008, for eight years, he was only out of the water three days in eight years. Mm -hmm. And that's that can take its toll, not so much physically. The physical part, yeah, that's, that's true, but it's the emotional part and the mental part. And I think after 2008, the guy wanted to play. You know, he wanted to try and enjoy himself a little bit. And, uh, and I think it just got, you know, things got too tough on him. And, um, and 2012 was rough, but, boy, I tell you, fatherhood has definitely changed him. I've never seen him happier. I've known him for 16 years, and I've talked to Michael more the last year, Dan, than I did the previous 15 years. <laughs> we look at athletes and, and when they age, um, when they're at their peak. Like I watched the, uh, the women swimming. Missy Franklin was a star in London and you thought maybe mm. these were going to be her Olympics, but it, it feels like they've already passed her by and you got Katie Ledecky there. So the difference between when women sort of hit their peak and when the men do, uh, how is there a big difference in that age? There, there is. There's no doubt that the average age on the team four years ago was 26 and 23, 26 for men, 23 for women. So there's no doubt that women skew a little younger, but that's changed because money is more involved in the sport now. But women go through changes. I have four daughters, man, and, and you know, they go through these physical changes. And sometimes you just have to learn to adapt. Natalie Coughlin, 33, she adapted. You remember Amanda Beard at 16 yeah. in Atlanta. Boy, for two or three years after Atlanta, she was terrible. She came back, learned to adapt to her new body physically, m mentally, emotionally, and she ended up went on to win another gold medal. You know, four years later. So it, it's 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 this change in life, and and it's not just for Missy. It's not just changes physically, but it's changes outside of the pool. When she turned pro, you know, she's so nice, dude, that she has this this feeling of guilt with obligations to all her sponsors and uh, and i think that's that's taken a toll but boy she showed me a lot of heart last night man when she made that 200 freestyle she's swimming an individual yeah. event now if you could uh, sneak in passion bucket tonight or tomorrow that'd be kind of nice rowdy as a shout out to uh this show you know passion like passion bucket yes like somebody's passion bucket is full you know when somebody wins you can say oh look at look at his face his passion bucket is full I'm writing it down. Passion bucket, bucket. is full. Got it. Yes. It's, all, it's on. It's done, dude. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I was going to watch anyway, Rowdy, but I'm definitely going to watch now. I'm going to DVR <laughs> it. Uh, tell uh, Hicks he's doing a great job. It's a great great watch, great listen with you guys. Thank you so much, Dan. Appreciate it. See you in Rio. Yep. See you in a couple of weeks. That's uh, Rowdy Gaines. Now, that's a dude who is excited when he calls a race. He is into it. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.